so hello everybody welcome back so I wanted to continue talking to you about um, the things uh, that you are miscalculating or you are probably misinterpreting and um, you know it's kind of hard um, to understand these topics because when you are living in this, um, you know, dream that we have called life, um, it, you don't know what you're doing unless somebody tells you that you're doing it. It's like, um, you know, when you drive a car and then comes an alien and the alien says, what are you doing? And then you're like, nothing, I'm driving. And the guy and the alien is kind of looking at you kind of like, what? is driving and then you know you, you don't know why you're doing it and then you try to explain to the alien what the hell is driving and you don't know how to explain anything because every time that the alien asks a question you don't know the answer uh, or at least you have to think very carefully about what the answer is, because every time that you answer something, it will lead you to another question and then you end up in a rabbit hole. So, what is the topic for today? Well, is the fact that you are not alone in the, in the apocalyptic situation that you are imagining. See, in the movies, um, you know, even in this TV series and stuff, nobody has to deal with the with the corpses, you know, unless they are zombies. Um, I'm talking like actual, you know, corpses. Uh, every time that you see a movie like that, no, nobody finds blood anywhere, and if you find it, is is maybe one or two scenes, but it's not. Um, everywhere and not only that but people don't get sick like with anything which that doesn't happen either it's like it, it, it it's like um a thing in which people do not suffer from anything other than you know the apocalyptic team so if it is a zombie, then you're only dealing with zombies and you're not because you are human. And quite frankly, you know, even if you, if, even if you romanticize the idea of an apocalypse and stuff like that, as soon as it happens, um, people will panic. And there are several things that, that you know, people do not consider when when they are dealing with this topic. One of which is all of the groups that you are going to deal with. People tend to think, yeah, they will be gangsters, they will be like this or that, or, or politicians and stuff. So that, that, that's, that's, um, that's understandable because, you know, we try to, to associate it with, it within each other with groups. However, that is not exactly... Um, the best way to put it, if, if you were in an, you know, trying to explain this to an alien. And so I'm going to try to explain this uh, in a way that you, you might get my point. Um, because, you know, I, I am a teacher and I'm trying to get the point uh, of, of your own thought process. You know, uh, if you wanted to, to, to go to, to uh, a channel that tells you, what to think, you know, you're probably in the wrong channel. I'm trying to teach you how, how to understand the, the, the process and, and the, how to understand the, the, the points that you want to keep in mind because patterns tend to repeat themselves. And if you don't understand certain things, then your logic uh, may overshadow those points and if that happens uh the the, the consequences of that m might end up you know being very very dear and so you know you you want to try to understand certain things 
And so, you know, I want to tell you that uh, during hard times, it will be you and your group, but you and your group might be you and two groups that you have, especially if you're a teen. Because when you're dealing with, um, you, know, you know, with each individual, as in, you know, you or, or your husband or whatever, um, each individual has his or her own friends. They might not be your entire group's friends, but it would be yours. And so if you have this in mind, you will also have to consider that uh, each individual will place um, different kind of values on the relationships that they have with these people. And for you, that value may not have any kind of sense. So for example, you know, this is a typical thing, you know, like, like in the movies that, um, you know, there will be a guy who, uh, who has a daughter and then he absolutely hates um, the boyfriend, you know, so he doesn't get what she is looking in him. So he's kind of like, you are my daughter, you're smart, you're beautiful. Why the hell do you want with that, you know, trash of a human being kind of thing? So, you know, that can actually happen. So you have, each individual can have uh, conflicting groups. And when that happens, uh, the, the, the value of, of these relationships will play huge roles. And this is going to be a huge, huge problem um, when you're dealing with kids, when you're dealing with teens, and then when you're dealing with your couple, as in your husband or your wife. And, you know, with brothers and sisters, it's not going to be that of a big of a problem. Because even if you hate each other, you will still be able to come up with an arrangement. Because you see, the whole thing about uh, relationships is the following. Um, let's say that uh, you have a plane filled with people. And this plane went down into an island. And there were 20 survivors. These 20 survivors, let's say that they hate each other. Like, they absolutely hate each other. Um, but they were able to survive and manage uh, to work together, you know, and, and actually they learn how to respect each other and how, what to expect of each other, you know, during several uh, days and weeks and whatever. And so now, um, if there was another plane who crashed into that island... These 20 people that in the beginning hated each other, they still hate each other, but they work together now. And it's kind of like you have an image of each one of the 19 people that are there with you that you hate. But you understand that even though you hate each other, you need each other to survive. So you work together, even though you hate each other. So if there was another survivor, you know, like I said, another plane, with another 20 survivors, um, this, this whole thing, let's say that, you know, you needed an engineer. So you don't have an engineer in your group currently, but the plane just crashed and now they have an engineer in the other group. So whoever was doing the engineer work, even though, you know, they don't have a, a credential or anything, um, but they were doing it will now feel very threatened for the actual engineer. And not only that, but the, the 19 survivors with you, once you try to work with the actual engineer, you might not be able to do it. Because even though he's an engineer and he has credential and, and hell for all I know, all of you may love the freaking guy, you won't be able to cope with that. Here is why. Because in your mind, um, 
the guy who is an engineer and has a credential from the university and everything, and even though he, you love him, he or she is not as reliable as the guy that you absolutely hate, but he's there with you. So let me explain this. Uh, this has been proven, you know. Um, there were survivors that, uh, you know, have been together for, let's say, uh, two weeks or two months or four months or whatever. And they learn how the hell to work together and everything, right? So basically, they become like a family. And as soon as these, uh, you know, let's say that uh, a ship went through the island and now they're all rescued. Now they can all go to the country that they were from. And now they can, let's say that they were all from the same community, so they go back home. As soon as they go back home, they, they, they will try to, 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 let's say, go and have drinks. But as soon as they go and have drinks, they don't know the role anymore. They don't know who they are in the group anymore. And they can't cope with that. So it's kind of like, I'm not an engineer because I don't have a, 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 a university degree, but I am an engineer because I was able to do all these things in the group. So it, 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 now that I am home, I'm no longer the engineer for the group. And now that, you know, there is no need for the engineer in the group, you know, if, if you were going to, you know, have drinks with them, you will not know what to say. You, you will not know what, how the hell to develop a new relationship. The reason is because when we, when we are in, thrown into a family, as in we are born, you set up a role. And this role is, 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 is like, it's nearly impossible to get out of that particular role uh, inside your family. So for example, if you were the black sheep from the beginning, you will very likely be the, the black sheep forever. It doesn't matter if you're the saint of the family. If, if everybody else agrees that you are the black sheep and everybody else with you and you also play the role as, as the black sheep, if all of the suddenly you were not the black, the, the black sheep, nobody will know who the hell you are and nobody will trust you. And then your relationship with your family will be destroyed. And at this point, you will, you will see a hell of a lot of people turning into themselves because, you know, you are kind of like, I'm not going to be poor forever. I'm not going to be uh, the engineer only. I'm not going to be, you know, whatever it is that you are um, forever. I want to change. I want to grow. So what happens is that your entire family is going to try to drag you down so that this role will not change. Now, this is something that is kind of common. You know, everybody will tell you, for example, let's say that you want to try um, building a new company. Your family will be the first people that will tell you not to do it. The reason is because they want you to feel safe. But it's not really feeling safe. It's the fact that if you are not, let's say, the, the niece or, or the cute guy, um, you know, that we can rely upon because he's family or whatever, but now you're going to be something different, they don't know how to react to that because that means that their role will also have to change. And every time that somebody changes in the family, you will change with them. And not everybody is willing to go to somebody else's space uh, in terms of changing. So this is going to play a huge role um, in, in terms of uh, the relationship with, with other people when, when you are dealing with hard times. Here is why. Because family, at this point, uh, if you were always fighting with your sister, you will still fight with your sister and you will be okay. I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm fighting with my mom. I don't care. You know, I, I might be peace every day because I'm, talk, I'm fighting with my freaking mother. But that's not the point. The point is that the relationship is there. I already know how the dynamics of this relationship works. So that group doesn't count. However, I have other groups that I do not know how the relationship works. Mostly friends and mostly strangers and colleagues. Because 
for all I know, colleagues might be, you know, um, in a different kind of level of the game. So how is this uh, supposed to help you out? Well, here's the deal. Let's say that I'm a teen. If I'm a teen, I am definitely putting a hell of a lot of more pressure into the social relationships that I have, you know, rather than the family ones. Because the family ones, I already know. And not only I already know, but I probably feel and I probably am very angry at all of my family. There is a hell of a lot of baggage in there. However, with the social things, I get to choose. And not only that, but some of the social groups will actually choose me. So it, it, this one is, is about freedom. And so the relationship will be different. And therefore, uh, teens are more likely going to choose all the time their friends over their families. And if the group of friends is, is, is a bad, you know, bad news, like um, the guys are, are drug addicts or, um, you know, thieves or something like that, then very likely um, this is going to influence a hell of a lot uh, the group that you will have to deal with within your family. So let me explain this to you. If you are um, currently in a bad spot, like let's say that there, there are zombies nearby and you have to run. If you have to run, the teens are going to very likely search for their friends. They are not going to help you, the adult, try to get your brother or sister, meaning your aunt or whatever. Oh, hell no. Their priority is going to be their friends. Not only that, but the teens are going to be different. And the kids, oh, hell no, the kids, if you are trying to leave the dog behind, the kid will absolutely kick you, scream the hell out of you. And if they can, they will kill you before they freaking leave the freaking dog, you know? Because the kid is kind of like, you don't abandon the pets. So in the kid's eye, if, if you have a zombie attack and you don't run to save the pets, you as an adult are unreliable. So, you know, the, the whole dynamics of, of what the relationship is in terms of um, importance and in terms of um, the social development of, of the relationships per se, is going to be, uh, you know, quite, quite, quite not, like, oh crap, 99% of the time, it will be the opposite of whatever the hell you expect. And if you have no expectations, I can tell you that you are going to be screwed all over. Because even if you have... Um, no expectation, everything will turn out to be the, the opposite of logic in your head. So it's going to be huge. So let me explain this. Let's say that, you know, you have a husband and you're alone with your husband, so you're a couple. And, you know, you have a sister. So there are zombies nearby and you're running towards your sister because, you know, I mean, come on, it's your, it's your husband and your sister. Who the hell is there in your life other than the two of you, right? And the two of them. So what happens is that your sister has decided to run and hide with a group of friends. Or she might run towards your mother and you don't talk to your mother. So what the hell? So in your mind and in your head... You're thinking, my group is me, my husband, and my sister. In your husband's mind, it will be you and him, not your sister. And in your sister's mind, the group is her mother, you know, which is your mother, and you, and hell, not even your husband. So you have a conflict. Because now you have two groups. You have your husband's group, which he's thinking we need to go alone. And you have your sister group, which is kind of like, oh hell, we're bringing our mother. And, you know, you kind of understood that because your sister and you get along, and because you and your husband get along, that 
your husband and your sister will get along. And not only that, but they will do what you think because you are the leader of the group. And that doesn't work like that. It, it, everything in terms of, of the social uh, web thing, it, it, it works because of the dynamics of the representation of the drama that you have with each relationship. And I do mean drama. Um, and that drama, at this point, even if you hate it, that drama is reliable. If there is no drama, then you don't have a relationship. And if you don't have a relationship, then basically you don't know what the priority is in that aspect. So let me explain this. People who hate each other will actually, um, will, will keep each other in the loop. It will be kind of like you're here and the person that you hate is kind of here and you're not letting go because you, know, you hate each other. Basically, you are attracting each other. Basically, you already know that you hate these people. And this is, is important to understand. However, if it was the opposite, as in, okay, we love each other and we get along and we don't care. Yeah. How much effort did you put into those relationships? I'm going to tell you. The drama is going to be, you know, Nearly, let's say, from uh, in a scale from 1 to 10, let's say that the drama is uh, level 1 or 2. You know, 10 being I hate you and, you know, 1 being I'm perfect with this person. So what happens is that, let's say that, you know, you are making a speech and you are thanking everybody that you know. You are probably going to thank the doorman, the, the you know, the doorman, the people that, you know, that deliver your, your newspaper, every single person that you know. But the most important one, which is the one that you have as a number one, is going to be left out. Why? Well, because there is no drama. And w when you don't have a drama with a relationship, in your head, it, 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 it just flows. Sorry, I got kicked out out of my own room. By my daughter, by the way. So, like I was saying, you know, if you don't have drama in the relationship, then you need to make sure that it's not, the relationship is not entirely perfect. Because if it is entirely perfect, then you are certain of that relationship. If that happens, then the whole dynamics of that group will be different. It will be a very different kind of, um, I don't know how to put it, but it will be a different um, level of importance in terms of your daily life. And it will also be hard for you to form any kind of other group that does not involve them. So, for example, let's say that, you know, you are totally, totally, totally in love with your husband. And your husband is totally, totally, totally in love with you. So the two of you work extremely well together. And, you know, the relationship is the number one. As in, you have no drama, you, have, you are soulmates, and, and whatever. Well, you just became one person. And if the two of you are one person, then that means that you are already, you are already a team. However, you still are two people. You are one person, but you are still two people. And as two people, you will have two different settings in, uh, of their own. And you will still need certain room to maneuver. And that means that you will probably choose different groups. And if you choose different groups that you, you, you might want to, you know, consider when, when helping, because during hard times, you, you are going to be limited in your resources. So you are going to be picky 
about who you are, you are choosing to help and why. And at this point, this relationship went from one to a ten in the, la in the level of drama. Because you are one person, but you are going to, to, to find out that even though you are one person, you are two people. And if you don't have a clear handle into, you know, a, a clear um, image of the drama of handling differences between the two of you, you are going to crash and your drama will be a number 10 overnight. And at that point, I can tell you that your group is no longer your husband. And it's going to go crazy in terms of choosing sides. Because at this point, you might have kids, you might have other things and, and whatever. And the point is that when you have a relationship, you need drama. Now, do you need a 10 drama? Oh, hell no. Oh, crap. If you have a 10 in a drama situation, you are probably going to have a heart attack every day. So, no. What you want is a, a, a clear image in, in, on, on the level of drama that you're willing to take in each relationship. And you need to figure out how to place that drama with the group entirely. And then, you know, within this, you got to figure out the drama for the other people's relationships so that you can pick your group and so that you can pick the resources that you're going to assign to everyone and i can tell you that this is going to be even harder because when you're dealing with your teens and stuff like that that now that you know you probably already have a, a lot of drama with teens right i mean come on you're an adult and the teen is thinking that they know everything uh, and, and they are probably also thinking that they want to kick you. So, you know, it's very, very, very hard. And here is what I have found out, you know, uh, with, with me being the teacher of, of teens and stuff. Is that um, the parents don't understand how to set up the limits of that drama. And... It sucks because you can see and you can feel that the teens love their parents and the parents love their teens, but they haven't figured out how to play the drama properly. And this is why the teens will rebel. This is why the teens will rather go with, you know, friends. This is why the teens will not, you know, talk to the most of the adults. And this is why everything goes to hell and, and everything. It's because handling the drama for each relationship that you have, it, 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 it requires a expertise level. So if you were in a video game, it would be kind of like you going into a fight with a with the the you know the level of, of the the final boss kind of deal and you not knowing how the hell to run you know so hell no you gotta learn how to hell to run how the hell to stop an attack how the hell to attack and how you know most importantly you need to understand when to do certain things and i can tell you that the adults we 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 the adults people that are over 35 Right now, the, the year is 2021. If you are 35 or more, I'm talking about you. Our regeneration, we do not know how the hell to set up limits. We do not know how to say no to people. And we do not know how to handle a hell of a lot of things. That, are, you know, generations that are 65 or more, this year, 65 or more, they, they did know how the hell to do this, but we don't. So the, we are in a 30-year gap in which, uh, you know, we crave love, especially 
from our kids. But we don't create the drama. And here's the deal. No drama means no growth. It also means no stability. And it also means no um, certainty of, of certain things and whatever. Because you see, it, let's say that you are in a, a toxic relationship with your father because he's an alcoholic. You already know that the freaking guy is an alcoholic. You love him anyway. But you already know that you love him, but the drama that you have is the fact that he's an alcoholic. Now, why is he not an alcoholic? Well, very likely, you know, I don't care what the hell he tells you, very likely, he doesn't know how to help to set up limits to himself. So if he doesn't know how to help to set limits to himself, he will not know how to help to put limits on other people. And things need to know and need to test these limits. And they will test them uh, to the full extent of whatever the hell they can think of because they don't know where the limits are. And when you don't know where the hell is the limit, you can't rely on that thing. You, you don't know how to measure it and you don't know how to, how to do anything. And at this point, I can tell you that the drama level will go not even a 10. When I scale from 1 to 10, that drama thing will be a 100. Because they will not know how the hell to set up limits for themselves, your, their families, their toxic relationships, the good relationships that they have, and everything. And the sex is going to go crazy. In this point, because uh, what we do with, the, with our heads in our minds will also be affected into our bodies. And so, uh, uh, you know, it will be like nine out of ten people will have safe, se uh, uh, self-hatred towards themselves and then towards everybody. And this is going to create an even bigger, 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 like, uh, you know... Uh, uh, not even a measurable amount of, 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 of uh, pressure into the group and into everything. Because nobody knows what the limits are. And then you will have, you know, someone within the group who will become, you know, like a dictator or whatever. And that person might be evil, might be a mean, might be the cruelest person on, on the planet, whatever the hell it is, but people will still go after him because he's the only one who knows how the hell to put the limits. And when in a group, whoever knows how the hell to put up limits, it, that person, even if you hate it, 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 that is going to be the one that everyone will follow. Because he or she is the one that knows, uh, you know, it's like they have a standard. And it, it, it's like it, they will have a secret thing that nobody else has, which is it, that. It, it's an expertise on the level of the game. And that expertise will allow you to select better groups. It will also allow you to help uh, gather better resources. It will also um, be seen as arrogant from other people. And it will also be a huge problem uh, in terms of, of, of um, the love. Because you're thinking that the relationships work because you love the person. You see, love is not meant to be a tool for measuring drama. Love is just a tool for connection. It's not a tool for, um, you know, drama. Drama is an entire different kind of tool that has nothing to do with love. Hell, for all I know, you can feel hatred towards your... your um, you know, uh, your colleague or your boss. You don't love them and yet the drama is there. See? So, uh, the, the relationship uh, based upon drama is the one that will gather most of your energy. And if it gathers most of your energy, that is probably going to be where your source of, uh, your source of stress 
and the hard times and everything else will come there. So if you are going through a hard time, you are probably going to blame these people that you have drama with. And you're also going to ask for their help because you are a victim. And it will also play the role of the ego and everything else. So when you're trying to explain this to an alien or somebody that doesn't get it, you know, they will be kind of like, what the hell? If you love each other, then why are you fighting? And then you're like, yeah, my, I, I love my father, but he's an alcoholic. Yeah, but if you love him, then why do you care if he's an alcoholic? You know, you just love him and, you know, it, it, it is his choice. I mean, he is the one who is destroying his life. So why, you know, why will you not help him or something like that? You know, kind of like that. The alien will have a hundred thousand questions as in why this happened. And then now, finally, you got it. You can love somebody, but that doesn't mean that there will be no drama and that doesn't mean that you will not know how the hell to set up limits to this person. So you need to, before hard times, you got to figure out for yourself which are your own standards. And from those standards, you, you want to filter out the people that you will get close to each level of um, inner circle of, of the group thing will go. Ideally, the closest of the circle will be only your husband and you. Then your kids and, and you know, maybe your mom and whatever. And then somebody else's, you know. And then, you know, you will increase this uh, based upon that, um, that level of... Um, a standard thing. So, for example, let's say that uh, you have friends. Yeah, let's say that um, if they lie to you, you will not talk to them anymore. However, that standard will not apply to your kids. If your kid lies to you, oh, hell, for all I know, you're, you can beat them up. But you're not going to stop loving them and you're not going to stop talking to them because they lied to you, you know, because there is blood in, 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 in between the two of you. And hell, for all I know, your husband might be lying to you and then you are actually going to kill him because you go kind of like, why the hell will you lie to me? I want to beat the shit out of you and I'm going to kill you. Kind of a deal because you are more than angry because the standard that you want to apply, you can't enforce it into certain levels of the group. And knowing this will create certain expectations and certain dramas. And this is where things get really interested in terms of um, uh, the relationships with during good times and during hard times is the fact that you will have to set up these limits or you will be absolutely isolated and you will absolutely will depend upon medication and you will be severely and I do mean like entirely and severely limited because you are a no-no and a nini we call it the nonis uh, when you're a noni basically um, people will push you around and people will not care for you and they will abandon you and not only that but you nobody will care you know if you die nobody will even notice why? Well, because, you know, you are a noni. What the hell, you know? Uh, you don't have limits for yourself and you don't have um, anything. They might love you to that, but, you know, each person, like I said, each person has to develop uh, their own um, sense of uh, limits. And limits are set with people that have drama. If you have a noni, you have no drama. If you have no drama, you have no relationship. Because at this point, I can tell you, you are like, oh, hell no, but my husband is perfect, or this person is perfect. And then I go, really? Really? You are being 100% honest about that person being 
completely perfect. As in that person has no one flow. See, what you what you want is people that have flaws, but you 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 take them with the flaws and you are okay with them, you know? And so the flaws, the flaws of this person, like say that you dance, but this person doesn't, then you are okay with that. Or this person cannot cook, but you are okay with that. And, you know, these things are important to you, and yet you are okay with that. That means that they are not perfect. Because the definition of perfect for you means that your husband is a great cook, great like this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and that. And the guy has, you know, out of 10 things that you want, the guy has seven. So he's perfect for you. But he doesn't have the three out of the two. So if you were in a party and you need the guy to dance and he doesn't want to dance because he can't or something like that, you might want to reconsider that one, you know? Or you will go out and, and dance with somebody else, which, you know, will, might create a little bit of jealousy or whatever. And that will be totally okay. See, the point is that uh, you can be reliable and yet uh, we as humans, um, we value uh, the drama. However, uh, you know, there is a point in which too much drama, you're gone. Because, you know, I'm not willing to put up with this amount of drama. So, for example, for me, Oh, hell, uh, uh, probably in a scale from 1 to 10, I am, you know, 10 being extremely dramatic. Oh, hell no, I'm probably good, good with a, a guy or a girl that I, I have a three level in the drama thing, you know, and that is a very big if, you know, maybe a four, I'm willing to go there. But other than that, oh, hell no, you know, but I have friends that are actually a 10 in the level of drama with everybody else. Because they are maniacs of control and they are like crazy. And I keep telling them that this is insane because you can't control everyone. And you can't control everything. Because this is creating too much drama. And if you create too much drama, then you're going to have the eye of a heart attack. So my ideal level of drama is three or four. Maybe, you know, between two and three and four. But it will depend upon you. Because it will depend upon your standards. The more perfectionist you are, the more drama and, and, and the more hidden enemies and hidden things that you're going to have. And, and this is going to play huge roles in terms of, um, you know, uh, the groups that you're going to be dealing with during hard times. So I hope that this was helpful because, you know, uh, at this point, I, I would like you to just sit down and ask yourself, who do you not have drama with that you would like to have in your group? And who do you have too much drama that you definitely want to try to avoid in the group? Because too much drama will also create other tensions with other people. So, you know, it, it's kind of like that. I don't know. So I hope, you know, that, that this is, um, like I said, helpful. So thank you for watching. See you again soon.